For more debates, updates, and bonus content, sign up at thebigconversation.show. Take mystery number one, the applicability of mathematics. I think this is a huge issue because on Platonism, you have this abstract, atemporal, non-spatial realm of causally effete objects, and the physical world happens to operate according to certain mathematical principles that you've described. And as uh, Mary Leng, who is a philosopher of mathematics at the University of Liverpool, has said, on Platonism, the applicability of mathematics to the physical world is is a happy coincidence, (laughs) which just seems incredible. By contrast, we know that minds can design things. And the view that there is an omniscient Uh, mind who has designed the physical world on the mathematical blueprint that it had in mind is a very ancient perspective that goes back to Middle Platonism and people like Philo of Alexandria who said that the intelligible world, the intelligible cosmos exists first in the mind of the logos, the, the divine intellect, and then is instantiated in the physical world uh, by the Logos who creates the world on this blueprint. And that seems to me to be uh, a good solution to the one and the many problem. I, the thing is that you call it a solution. I, the trouble is, it's, it's, I think it, my problem is it's too vague. I don't see how you can do much with this particular view. You see, we, 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 when it comes to the explanation of how a physical world operates in terms of mathematics, it's extraordinarily precise. Mm. And, and one can say an awful lot about that. But a statement like the one you mm-hmm. make here worries me because it's you, know, you can call it a solution, but it doesn't tell us very much. Well, I don't but even it know what solves my, the mystery. I don't even know what it, <laughs> when you say that. Is it because it's very hard to then investigate yeah. this this explanation itself? That you like, there's a mystery disprove, behind the mysteries. You you need to be able to say uh, how could you contradict such a view? You see, it's it's so oh. so vague in a way. I mean, why wasn't there a, 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 a mind which was in some malicious? Well, maybe it is malicious. I don't know. We we don't. Um, it's just saying it's a mind without telling us... Right, I haven't said anything about yes. the moral properties of this. Uh, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> like, but I would be another prepared question to. Is. I, I mentioned yes. earlier that among the logically necessary truths that this mind would n- gr- know and ground would be not only mathematical truths, but certain ethical truths. Mm-hmm. I think certain ethical principles are not contingent, but are necessarily true. And so this would provide a grounding for the objectivity of moral values and duties in a paradigmatic good. This being would be not only the source of the mathematical realm, but of the ethical realm in being the supreme good. And so now we're beginning to add a little more content to this notion. As the creator of the physical realm, this mind would have to be uncaused, timeless, spaceless, immaterial, enormously powerful. In order to cause the ethical realm, it would have to be good, perfectly good, and to cause the mathematical realm, it would have to be omniscient. And so we're winding up, I think, with a very rich theological ultimate. 